Welcome everyone to another exciting particle tutorial. Um, sometimes it's my duty at work to make things look like it's rained on. Um, sometimes it's beyond that we have to animate the rain and uh, make things look wet overall. Today I'm going to cover how to make uh, uh, use P-Flow to show rain on the surface of uh, cars or uh, Halloween just passed, maybe a pumpkin whatever it might be. So anyway, here's our example scene. And this is kind of what we're going for. So, if we examine this, and actually we're gonna take it even a little bit further than this even. So, let's examine this. Uh, we have the initial spawn of the particle, which is dripping from uh, our emitter. The collision, when it hits our plane, which actually spawns a little splash and a drip. And then they stick to the surface, which is neat. Contour to the surface. And uh, they fall, and when they hit the ground, they have another little splash. And as you can see, uh, over time, I animated a wind's... Uh, um, space warp to push the particles as if the car or whatever it is is moving and starting to move faster so anyway that's what we're going for um, I was going to show you how to do it from the emitter like this, but I might have it just spawn right on the uh, plane. Uh, I don't know. Um, I'll just have, I'll probably do it like this. Either way is fine. It depends on how you have your scene set up when you're doing the actual job. Um, if you want like a rain system in the sky that's literally going to generate the water droplets, you would do it like this. If, uh, if every droplet doesn't need to be accounted for, you can have them just spawn right on the surface. Today we're going to cover this way, just because, I don't know, this is what I did today. So, with that being said, we'll look at it a couple more times. Um, let's get started. I'm just going to go to my start file. Um, yeah, I'm not going to save that. So every time we open a new scene or um, whatever, let's in, uh, I ask you guys to investigate to see what's going on with it. So let's open our layers, and we see that it's just literally this plane, so drip plane. And... Uh, those of you before that's taken my particle tutorials or classes, um, I know that I always ask you to create a new layer for the particles, and today is going to be no different. So let's call it, uh, I always uh, put it Z underscore uh, P flow. Okay, good. I got a crazy crow outside my window right now. Okay, so first things first, let's create um, our base flow system. Okay, so in my right quad menu, I have a P flow shortcut, particle view shortcut. Um, if you don't have that, which you probably won't, I customize all my quad flyouts. There's two other ways you can find it. There's a, you can hit six on your keyboard. Sorry, I got it on the other screen. If we close that, the absolute longest way, and you Maya fans will enjoy this because I need to go into like six areas to find it. Um, under your creation tabs here, you go to particle systems, PF source, which stands for particle flow source, and then particle view. So that's how you bring it up. Anyway, now that we have it up, 
let's just put a and uh, let's put a standard flow in there. All right, now let's go through all the normal steps. Make sure this is set to your maximum amount. Uh, 100. Your viewport will probably be at 50% when you default open. Uh, make sure that's 100%. Event. Uh, let's rename this. Let's call it a uh, rain spawn. And right away we can get rid of uh, speed, rotation, and shape. Let's bring in a, a gravity. Um, well, let me delete that. We'll go the long way. Um, so, okay. Underneath space warps, forces, gravity. And here's a little guy. When we build it inside the actual user interface here, It'll just put it out at all zeros here. Also, because I was messing around with mine, mine's a circle. You can set that through a, right in here, circle, diameter, um, or once you have it selected, you can go to your modifier tab and clean that up a bit. So I want to take him and put him right over our plane. Let's uh, expand him a bit. So the drips will come, or the, the drops will come out of uh, inside of this, because I had set the volume and position, volume. Uh, make sure you change the C to that, just click new, get a random number, that's nice. Force, you want to drag it in below position, and add force. So let's see what we got now. So now we have, uh, there's no speed and there's nothing really directionally aiming these particles. The only thing they're doing is uh, spawning in the volume, the volume again, and then the force gravity is just pouring them from there. So that's really all that's happening right now. I'm going to change my color to green for go. There's gonna be a lot of like little steps for this, and this is just gonna be the first part. We're gonna cover the actual initial drips and hits. So they're going right through our plane right now, as what we'd expect. So let's make our our plane a collision object. Let's go to uh, space warps again under forces deflectors, and we want the U deflector. That stands for universal deflector, which means we can. Pull it out and then grab a piece of geo. We want to act as the deflector, which is good. I'm going to turn the bounce down to zero, inherit velocity down to zero for now. Um, that may play a role, I'm not sure. This is kind of like a freestyle um, particle tutorial. Um, I went through it before to make, well, I've done it actually a bunch of times for work, um, a bunch of times for other things, but. Uh, you never really know the numbers by heart because every little scene is just a little bit different. Well, anyway, so now that we have this, uh, our collision object, and we can tell if we go into our modifier panel and it says drip plane, which is obviously the name of this piece of geo here. And this was just a plane I made uh, 50 by 50 segments and I added uh, noise to it. So nothing intricate. And again, you'll have this as a start file. Okay, so let's add a collision. Collision event. So collision. Drop that in uh, right below, right above display. So collision none. Let's click add. And add our little guy here. Set the bounce. Let's see what happens. Whoa! It's sliding off it. And uh, already, if I try to scroll backwards, I'm getting a little chunked out computer. So I'm gonna add a cache. Um, if you're in 2011, which you probably are. Um, um, probably are uh, for work people 
Um, you're not gonna be able to cash. You're gonna be missing a couple of these caches, so I'm just gonna stick to the uh, the memory cache here. And again, I want to set this high. And uh, just let it do its thing for a second. So now we see the particles just kind of sliding off it. Um, that would be good if you were doing like a really small system and you wanted that to be like a, like a little rock slide or something. You know, uh, we're looking at it really out of scale right now, but uh, these could be rocks. If you turn up the uh, the friction of this, you can get them to behave different. You can put a spin on them. They could kind of be like a little rock slide. Um, however you want to do it. We're not going to do that today, though. Again, we're focusing on raindrips on uh, hard surfaces. Primarily windows, glass of all sorts, uh, sheet metal, things like that. So, let's go ahead and make this guy, I forget what number he was. Oops. Yeah, I'm going to jump my top viewport to make sure it's over all the geo. Okay, that should be good. Okay, so now they're colliding with the plane. But what's not happening is they're not sticking or dripping. They're just kind of bouncing off and sliding off. So let's fix that. Let's put a speed in. I always like to start like this. I put a speed. There you are, speed. Let's set that to zero. Uh, set new seed. And uh, let's see what happens now. Nothing. <laughs> it should stop. Because when they're colliding, collision, it's moving to this event, speed. So let's make that red for stop for now. Let's just, we'll leave it red. That's fine. Good contrast to green. And uh, Christmas is right around the corner. Feeling very festive. So on. Alright, so our proof of concept is there. Let's uh, let's reduce the particle count to, uh, let's say, 5. I'm also going to uh, reduce the um, diameter. Just so we can get them kind of in the same area. Turn the logo off. So five water drops. Good. So instead of them just sticking, right, we want them to kind of slide down the contours of the plane. So let's add a lock bond. Lock bond. I just overwrote the speed, um, as you saw there. I want to lock on object. Click Add and grab our surface. And this is where it can be kind of tricky. Every now and then, uh, this can be a real uh, gigantic pain in the ass. Uh, hopefully, this won't be one of those times. So after we add that lock bond, let's uh, let's change our color. Like an orange is nice. Um, so I know there's a lot of color changes. I like to try to keep it straight in my own head and flipping those colors helps me do it. So let's just call this a gravity G uh, underscore initial underscore fall. So G for gravity, obviously. Let's call a uh, copy that, make sure it's on copy. And let's call it G underscore Drip pull. And let's put a force inside of our. Let's rename this. Um, drip um, guide. 
Because what's going to happen when we get these things moving down the plane, we're, this is going to lead where our tail is to the drip, the, uh, the trail behind it. So let's add a force to this. Force, add, and make sure it's our drip pool. Okay. So as we can see, when it hits, it's still staying right where it is, even though we have the gravity in there. All right, here's where we start experimenting. So force is at 100%. Put that at 99.5. You see how they get a little bit of movement, but it's almost like they're on a spring. So let's put a, okay, let's lock the surface. Let's do all the regular stuff. Restrict the surface. If you notice, if we turn this down more, the more play you'll get out of it. If we turn up this gravity, See, we're, they're hitting the bottom of the plane, and then they're springing back still a little bit. Let's uh, make this 99.5. And let's turn on both. Now we're starting to get the look we're looking for. Hits, it slows down, it starts to collect. And this is going to be an experiment every time for me. I just don't, uh, it always is. Every time I do something like this, it's a bunch of digging around inside of it. So this is one of those, this is one of those, uh, um, Tutorials you really got to stick with in order to get an understanding of what's happening. So friction, I'm going to turn all the way down to the matter. Until you get the look you're looking for, you're going to have to tinker. Uh, this is kind of what I'm looking for. This actually looks pretty good. I'm going to turn the volume up a bit. I'm going to go to 50. And this uh, might even be a little too slow for rain, but uh, it's going to be up to your artist's decision. Uh, we can get it there faster by increasing the gravity. And now we kind of have what we're looking for. So. Again, I'm going to do another test, or I'm going to open the diameter of this a bit. Okay, good. So you can see they're all funneling to the middle, but that's good, because that means it's riding our contours properly. Good. Good, 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 good. That's kind of what we're looking for. I like that. So, okay, good. Now we have that. Lock bond is set. Um, drip guide we're calling it now let's add a trail to the drip so I'm going to jump back down to uh, five particles oops and diameter of five let's put it at two just so we can really uh, focus on our drips Okay, so the next step is we want to create a spawn event. So let's go through their alphabetical order. Although I know that and I've known that for a long time. For some reason, sometimes I still can't find shit. Spawn, uh, put it below your lock bond. Drag that guy out to the other side. And uh, let's call this, uh, rename it. Let's call... 
uh, let's call it S for spawn, and we'll call it uh, trails. Okay, now let's drag out a delete. Delete. Let's set this to uh, zero for the variation. Let's add a new seed and five for the length of uh, life. Let's connect this. So uh, right now it's set for once, which means you just spawn one. We want to travel per. S uh, we want to spawn per second. So let's see what that looks like. If you can see, there's a little extra particles floating around this guy now. That's because they're uh, at 100% inherited. Let's turn that to zero. And let's uh, change this so we can see it, make it a little brighter. Let's make it a bright, um, well, let's make it orange. But we'll make it a deeper orange than our last one. Or we'll lighten up the old one. Orange. Okay. So travel. Offspring is set to 1. Let's set that to 10. Oh no, we don't want that. Um, sorry. 1. Rate. Rate should be. Second should be a uh, travel by distance is what I wanted. I'm sorry. I was wondering why it wasn't going right. So make sure you uh, have your uh, trail set and travel by distance is what you want. So we can see our uh, drip guide is actually moving down it and then it's just spawning particles behind it that are dying five uh, frames behind it. So if it looks a little sparse, um, it's too far between particles, you can control that through step size. The lower the step, the closer your particles will be. Uh, for now, we'll leave it at 0.5. Let's scrub the animation. And they're going to collect at the bottom. We're not going to take care of that right now. We'll take care of that in a bit. I'm going to put 20. Let's see what that looks like. Good. It, kind of, it looks the way that we think it would. So that's good. I'm just going to leave it kind of like this now. So that's good. I'm going to turn up the gravity again. No, it's not helping a lot. You know when things aren't going right for you inside of Studio Max, when you do your space warps and you really got to jack it up. There's other things, other ways to do it. Those forces are not meant to be that high, um, uh, unless it's like special circumstances. So. Uh, let's turn down the friction. Maybe that will help. So we can turn that up. And now we're getting faster particles. That might be too fast now. Um, let's say 23. And again, this would all be judged on scale of what you're actually doing. Obviously, this is just a generic plane that uh, only represents, uh, you know, a small portion of what you'd be doing. So you'd have to tune that to the scale of your scene and make it make sense for you. But for now, that looks good. 
Um, okay, so say your object is in motion, though, and uh, we want to fake that with a wind, like I showed you in the uh, preview video. Uh, we had the particles kicking off towards the side like it was moving a little bit. And uh, there's not going to be any actual motion in this video, although if this one's popular, I will share to do it when an uh, object is in motion. It's a little trickier, more uh, delicate to deal with. Just because uh, right now your particles only have to know the coordinates of this one plane and it's static. Max sometimes has some issues with updating particles that have to calculate spatial position other than their local. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe it'll make sense if I end up doing that video. Anyway, um, these particles are dripping straight down. Let's add a little bit of variance to that. And we do that by adding a wind. So wind. Uh, let's go ahead and... I'm just going to put them at 90 degrees here. Uh, the long way again is to uh, go to your forces again. Space warps, wind, and then drag it out. Um, okay, so instead of an orange event here, I'm going to change these guys to ticks, or circles, I'm sorry. And I'm going to change these guys to dots, depending on how well they show up. Not very well at all. Uh, I'm just going to hide this for a second. So let's hide that, just so we can see these. Okay, little spermies almost. Okay, so wind. Let's set the uh, strength to zero. And these, our trails should be, uh, we didn't rename it, let's rename it. Let's call it a, a drip trails, should be all right. Got wrong, rails, perfect. Let's add a force into there. So force, put it above delete the uh, kill node. Let's add our wind. And uh, if we turn our wind up, we can see that it actually takes effect already. Uh, you know what, let's not put in that event because that will push just the trails. Let's grab this force and let's drag him right below lock bond. So let's try that now. Good, now they're following where we want. But again, obviously that's way too high and we don't really wanna push them at this point anyway. Um, we brought in the wind so I could add turbulence which will make these paths a little less smooth. Because water never moves exactly smooth. Uh, so let's take a look. So we turn up our turbulence We can see that these lines are now, you know, have a little bit of wave to them. 0 0.05. And let's, we can set the frequency to 2. So frequency is how often the actual noise pattern that the turbulence follows changes. Does that make sense? So like if uh, we had, if this spawned 100, and let's change this to a uh, rate 60. Um, all of the uh, noise pattern, all of the uh, turbulence would stay in the same noise pattern. They would always have the same waves to it. So let's create something ridiculous here. And let's emit to 100. Let's call this 150. So as this goes, you'll see a pattern. See how they're all loopy here and then they circle? They all follow the same pattern over and over. Now, if we just change our frequency, it will change how often that happens. So let's say one. See, they're not really following it now. It looks like they're kind of evolving as it goes. It looks more uh, organic. 
And that's kind of what we're looking for, just not as extreme. So one is good. That looked to see. Uh, it looked like it was evolving pretty good. Well, let's change it to two. I'm wrong. Three even. So three times that'll uh, it'll uh, three times faster it'll evolve through there. So again, you don't want all that happening like that. That's way too much. So let's uh, drag out a couple. And let's uh, lower the turbulence so it looks something like we had a little bit before. Maybe four. And again, that's pretty high for turbulence. But the lock, the, um, like I said, it's high for turbulence, but um, the lock bond is going to slow it down a bit. So we have to turn things up higher than we usually do inside of Studio Max. And now we'll all have them collecting at the bottom. We can go ahead and do something about that. So let's uh, let's put an age test in there. Not an AIDS test, an age test. We always do our particles with protection. Age test. So let's say, uh, let's give it just 10. Uh, let's give me a less than that. Let's say seven with a uh, variation of five, new seed. And when it hits that time, we'll just kill it so it disappears for now. Delete. We're not going to bother renaming that because we're just going to uh, change it later. So now we're getting what looks like drips on a car. Uh, or whatever it might be. And at the end of this, I'll actually show you how you can adapt this to other shapes without having to rebuild your uh, whole P-Flow script. So the particles hit. I'm going to change these now from green to blue to look more like rain. As they hit, they drip, and they hang out. Okay, so this age test is too short. Uh, we can set this to, let's say, uh, 20. And that's a little too long. We can put it at 15. And that'll be good. So, I mean, like, basically, as it's coming down to the bottom of that geo. And uh, even still, um, you can, let's say, for example, you can make a 60. And it will just kind of hang out at the bottom. And uh, if your uh, object is in motion, the water as it goes to the bottom of that geometry, unhide all. Um, if this plane is moving, you're gonna get some. Uh, like if the water is just sitting there, the you know the uh, the turbulence of the the vehicle or whatever just in motion, moving through air, is gonna create. Um, you know, instability of the particle location anyway. So that's not really all that bad. So right there, literally, if you're thinking about this in like a rendered sense, this is kind of just like a water drop that's accumulated at the bottom of, let's say, a door panel. And it's going to fluctuate as the wind blows through it. Um, in this case, we're gonna, we are going to cut a little shorter. So what did I say? Uh, 15, was it? 15... Let's say with a 10 variation. So they're just kind of making it to the bottom. They're getting out of there pretty quick after that. Um, if we were just going to leave it at delete it there, that would be, um, we wouldn't even really worry about it like that. But we're going to have it actually drip off of there and make contact with the uh, road or ground or even another piece of geometry you want to put under it. Maybe this is a water that's hitting the the rung of a ladder and then you know it drips down and hits the next rung and so on and so forth so I mean it could be anything okay so we're seeing it fall it goes down the bottom and dies so that's good and that is a that's gonna be the first part of this I'm gonna record I think all the parts together but um, right now, I'm going to give you a chance to play around with your settings and become familiar with this a little bit. So, um, I am going to rename this just because I'm ending it here. I'm going to call it uh, uh, Drip. Uh, 
guide death. So I'm going to save this as a, a lesson two start place. I'm going to rename all the things. Um, I'm going to call it a col underscore collision uh, universal I don't know if I named these or not but we uh, we should try to stay with this so let's call this uh, uh, wind let's call it w underscore turb and we name the gravities initial fall and drip pool okay yeah so I'm gonna cut this here but make sure to watch the next one it's coming right up it's a good one we're gonna add a uh, little hits so like as each raindrop hits our object we're gonna have like little splatters that come off of that so that will be good and fun and that's next so I'll see you then